Mario Galaxy. This is one of the first video games that I ever owned or ever played because when I when it came out, I was like five and I'm pretty sure I got it for my either fifth or sixth birthday. Uh, so I'm excited to revisit this game because it has been a long time coming. So without further ado, let's jump in. Every hundred years, a comet appears in the skies above the Mushroom Kingdom. This was always such a hype intro to- well, not hype necessarily, but... Like, the storybook vibe that this game goes for is pretty unique, I think. And I know there's other Mario games like Paper Mario that have a similar storybook type vibe, but I just like how a lot of the exposition for this game was done in the form of a children's story, because it really fits, especially when we get a bit later and we meet Rosalina and the Lumas and all them. It's it's just, it, it's a good way of cementing her role as the mother figure of the Lumas and kind of the game overall. And of course, we have cake. See, but this is a good way to build a hype intro. Bowser shows up and he's doing a bomb run of the entire kingdom. And this is how the game starts. What? What? This is probably, I would say, one of the most unexpected openings to any video game that I've ever played. Those kind of look like nipples. Mario somehow survives this. Do not worry about how. The game is telling me that I can control the camera with right stick. The game is lying. Which really sucks because I would actually like to be able to do that. Oh, I see. Not this crater, the other crater that's here. My mistake. Get over here, get. I will catch you, <laughs> yes. And here's the Mario character that everybody thirsts for in a totally platonic way, myself definitely not included. Rosalina. It is insane how much popularity this character gained though, because she is in one game as a main focus, and yet she is probably one of the most common to see Mario characters nowadays. Although I will say Pauline has pretty stiff competition in that regard. Like, she showed up exclusively in the first Mario game, and then she showed up in Odyssey, and now she's just in everything since. It's kind of amazing. Because she has even less of a role in that game than Rosalina does in this. Because Rosalina is actually super important, and Pauline is in, like, one area. The backflip is not letting me flip backwards. Alright. Off to the next planetoid we go. Yeah, I forgot about the special ground pound too. Shake the controller at the same time as you do the, um... Shake the controller, then ground pound, and you can actually home in on enemies, which is a nice touch. Certainly makes it a lot easier to take down enemies when you don't need to aim. And it gets you a much cooler animation. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but dive kicking is just better than just slamming your butt into somebody's face. Maybe it's just common decency. I don't know. It looks like it's making something. Well, gee, aren't you helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Luma. I'll keep doing what I was already doing. Hooray! We saved the star, and now we can move on to somewhere else, I guess. I do love the sound, the triumphant sound at the end of this level, though. The Grand Star Collection sound is great. Uh, I'm gonna regret that. <laughs> you know, of all stages in Smash Bros, I am genuinely shocked that this is not one of them. The Grand Combo Observatory would be the perfect place for a Smash stage. I think it might have been in 3DS, but why they never decided to port that of all stages is beyond me. Like, just look how cool this is as a location. Why would you not choose this over, say, I mean, Delfino Plaza is pretty beloved, so I get that, but like, you have so many better options. Why would you not pick this? It's a lovely place, genuinely. Oh, more story time. <laughs> how old is Rosalina actually? Like, we know she's at least a hundred, and by this implication, several hundreds. But, uh, we never really get much confirmation about her. I think that's part of what makes her so fun, though, is there's such little known about Rosalina, and she's such a fundamentally interesting character with her history and Mario lore, and especially what happens at the end of the game, that 
I feel like she would just be one of the most interesting characters to do deep dive into. Yeah, but Mario's always been pretty sparse on lore, so I guess I shouldn't expect too much. And I still can't freely control the camera. <laughs> Crap. Hmm. I think that's for Luigi, which I don't know if I'll do a second playthrough of this game as Luigi, but, uh... I mean, he is the better bro in my opinion, so I would be open to it. I'm also probably going to do the... Because I'm playing this on the, um, the collection that came out as a three-pack with 64 and Sunshine, so I'll probably get around to playing those as well at some point. Which, by the way, terrible practice that Nintendo did with that, making it a physical copy-only limited-time release for no apparent reason. I'm, I get why, because money, but it's just like, come on, have a little, di a little bit of shame. Especially considering how much they crack down on people pirating. Which, I mean, I get it, it's your intellectual property, you want to make sure it has its value. But come on, you're just making it harder for people to enjoy your games that they probably grew up with. Evil energy readings are off of the charts. Their power levels are all over 9,000. You're in grave danger. One thing about 3D Mario games that I do kind of, I wouldn't say dislike per se, but is disappointing, is how little power-ups are utilized. I get that with the way the game is designed, they don't really need to be here, but I just feel like it would be a nice touch. And it, yeah, like there are a few areas where you can use them too, but it's not enough in my opinion. And whenever they are, they're more like gimmicks rather than actually I think Galaxy 2 does a much better job of it, where they actually have an impact on level design. But like, a majority of the time in this game, it's just, oh, here's a thing that you can do, and you need to destroy all these crates with Fire Flower. And it's completely optional, and has nothing to do with the main level, but you can do it if you want to get 100% completion. So, fun fact about these meteors... You can actually destroy them, but the timing is pretty specific. He says accidentally doing it a second time without trying. And that's why you don't get cocky, kids. Nope. Oh, no. Ah, uh, that was unfortunate. <laughs> that's an embarrassingly bad death. Oh, so you can use star bits to get coins, too. Or lun-ups, too. All right. Time for the first boss fight of the game. A giant egg with a tail. Never mind, it's just a dinosaur. A plant-based dinosaur. I think this is what PETA classifies as their secret weapon, actually. Oh, you take four hits. Well, aren't you a deviation from the Mario formula? Not enough to save you, though. First star acquired. No problem. So what you're saying is they're basically pure space cocaine. His reaction is not doing much to convince me that this isn't pure space cocaine. A snack of cosmic proportions. Ah yes, we're getting the munchies. I like the idea that Mario is just going on an intergalactic snack run for these guys. That's pretty funny to think of. I wonder if he charges his flat fee or if it's like by a la carte. Done it. Catch you on the rebound. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you birth a galaxy. Just feed a star a bunch and eventually it forms a new planet. Don't question it. Science doesn't care. I've done research myself, but it's been mostly inconclusive, unfortunately. Oh, hey, nice. You can do it that way. I was really hoping I'd be able to cheese it like that. For no benefit whatsoever. And you'll notice there's a lot of pull star chips here, but uh, you don't need them. <laughs> I saw the star bits and instinctively tried to turn my controller up to go grab them. Huh. I didn't think you'd be able to go in there with the warp star in the way. Oh well, works out for me. What's on the rest of the planet, actually? Because you're obviously supposed to go through the warp star, but I want to check. Your reward for your desire to explore is star bits. 
which are literally so dime a dozen they fall out of the sky. <laughs> I think the game is a little bugged, guys. <laughs> you know, the layout of the ability to jump really makes all the difference in this game when you can kind of just walk past the electric fences. Ignore the fact that I got hit by one. Oh, bullet bills in this game are so cool. Like, they're, al they're almost never a threat, but in this game, they're just a heat-seeking missile that will destroy you if you're not careful. And I absolutely love it. You guys ready for some calamari? Let's play volleyball! My point! Oh, I remember this one, too. This is one of the few times where they actually do have the power-ups be part of the gameplay in this one. That's like I said, I think it's done better in the second game, but B Mario is probably the one time where I'd say it's an exception. I also know that there's another Mario power-up later that everybody hates, but personally I kind of vibe with. You'll uh, see that when it springs into action later. Oh, I hate this so much. By the way, this little hill. Because you can climb it with the right setup and with power-ups and all that, but you can't do it normally, and it's just enough where it's annoying to me. Because I always want to be able to do it. It's teasing. It teases me, and it... Oh. It gets on my nerves so much, because it's like, you are, you are scalable. I know you are scalable. I know I can do this, but the game just refuses to let me. A lesser man might think that's an indication that the game is telling you you can't actually do this, but I say, screw that noise. If I say I can do it, then the game proves me right, not the other way around. I forgot how limited your jump is in this with the bee mushroom, though. And you don't actually fly all that high, either. It's mostly just for hovering. See, you can do it! You can get up here! The game just refuses to let you unless you're bee Mario for some reason. Oh, you... you... You. <sighs> well played, Nintendo. Well played. But not well enough, unfortunately. Okay, maybe it is well enough. <laughs> this has got to be the most uncomfortable textured honey that I've ever seen. It just looks like mucusy, if you know what I mean. Which sucks, because I actually really like honey, and this is kind of turning me off. Hmm. I see what I must do, but I don't know if I'm strong enough to do it. Uh, oh, I don't... This is genuinely deeply uncomfortable. <laughs> it just feels so awkward. Like, I... I don't know how to describe it, but I, I, I don't think anybody would want to be in this position. You know, and the fact that you're forced to be is not fun. Maybe I'm overreacting, but I don't know. This just feels very deeply uncomfortable. Also, she has her own gravitational pull, which I uh, just noticed. I mean, technically every living, everything does actually. It's just too weak to notice on most things. But that was enough to pull Mario back, so she is one heavy beat. I can't believe it, but I've gotten my fourth star. Eh, who knows. Garbage pun, and I got it. So let's move on. Ah, five. I can't count, apparently. What else is new? I remember this one sucked on the Wii, so let's give it a whirl. Oh, I have to turn my controller completely 90 degrees. That's awful. Actually, honestly, that deep of controls for turns might actually be a benefit more than a detriment now that I'm trying it out. Oh, this is why it was so awful. The waves... The waves just absolutely mess with your depth perception, I feel like. Or not depth perception, your ability to turn. Whenever I get into playing a game and I'm trying to still do commentary... <laughs> like that, where the waves lost me the one-up. Yeah, whenever I'm trying to do commentary, it's really tricky to multitask sometimes. And this is one of the good examples of where it is really hard to do both of those things well. And some people would argue I can't even do that first one well at all. Come on, turn, turn, turn. You know, honestly, this is a lot more painless than I remember. Oh, gross. It's like I executed it. 
Ugh, that's genuinely uncomfortable. You're normally not able to kill Wiggler, so that's just genuinely uncomfortable. Also, seeing its head squished while the rest of it is just fine. Like, Mario is a pretty cartoony franchise, but that just felt wrong. I wonder if those have ever actually killed anybody. Because you literally just need to jump the second you see them doing anything. Well, time to murder a family. So I'd like to retract my previous comments about those things being super easy to kill. In actuality, they are the most difficult enemies in the game, and it's definitely not me trying to hide off the fact that I got hit by it. Definitely not at all. What? What is going on with my controls? I'm stuck on this fence post. Where's my free one up? All right, time to play the waiting game. I got bored of waiting. Huh. I've never landed on it before, so I didn't know that it stalled in midair if you did. All right, that's every star in the galaxy except for the boss. So I think you know what that means. Time to end the video. Please like, subscribe, comment, yada yada yada, and all that good stuff, and I promise I'll beat the boss in the first thing next level. I'm kidding, of course, we'll do the boss. I guarantee you I got absolutely nobody with that bit, but you gotta plug yourself every now and again, so... Uh, take it for what it is, a very poor sub-plug. <laughs> but please do, though, it would really help me out. Oh no, here comes the gremlin. What's, what, what's playtime today, buddy? And here we go, a peak example of Mario game design, and just, just look at this thing. Like, this thing is so unbelievably cool. It's got a Darth Vader helmet, and is absolutely intimidating and so cool to look at. And you want to know how easy it is to take down? It doesn't even move. Okay, Mega League, you're doing a bad job of proving my point of not moving. But it's such a cool design, and it's ultimately such an easy boss. So, of course, I still die to it. Right, I forgot. Only backflipping lets you dodge. Well, you know what they say, third time's the charm, and believe me, I am more embarrassed than anyone to admit it's taken me that many tries. I promise you this will be the last. If only for the sake of my own dignity. <laughs> Bullet bills are proving to be a little tricky to steer. There we go. I thought for sure that was gonna get me. But all I got is the sweet taste of victory after way too many attempts. <sighs> S tier boss design though, like, I wish that there was something similar to Megleg in the rest of the game. All right, two down and I think like seven to go, so this would probably seem like the LD time to end things, but I've got a bit of a surprise for you. So recently, or uh, a while ago, they told us about this little Luma here, and I think that this probably serves as a better final boss to end the video on because I always remember this galaxy being not the hardest in the world, but definitely way harder than anything that came before it. So let's just feed this guy all the space cocaine we've got, and he'll create an entire galaxy made of sweets. Let's -a go. I honestly think the entire reason I might be thinking this galaxy is tough is because I'm too impatient for it. Uh, wow, that is way shorter than I remember it being. Sounds like there's no checkpoints though. At least I'm assuming. Why would there be a checkpoint for this? The fact that it took me more attempts to beat Megleg than it did for me to beat the one that I specifically said is hard, and Megleg was the one I specifically said is easy, that's just genuinely disappointing to me for my own sake. But whatever, we got the star. All right. Uh, well, just like that, new galaxy, new terrace to explore. So of course, uh, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.